Good day, Kavibal, and welcome to our speakers' demo reel webinar series. For the demo teaching today, the topic will be on gender sensitivity and equity in the early grades through literature. Before we begin, say posting the Zoom link in the comment section before our demo teaching. And the first five participants will be able to join the Zoom meeting to have close interaction with the speaker during the session and have an open forum after the demo teaching. Those five participants or those participants will serve as the students for the speaker's demo reel and they will be able to get the chance to get a copy of Miss, uh, our speaker's lesson plan and PowerPoint. Again, for the participants who will join in our webinar, they will be able to get a copy of our speaker's part presentation and lesson. Buti pa yung kape. May creamer. Yung papel. May ball pen. At yung chalk. May eraser. <laughs> naku. Naku. Ito na naman ako. Oras na ba? oras na para may magmahal naman sa akin. <laughs> Char. <laughs> Kailan ko pa kasi mahanap pang Romeo to my Juliet? Hey, teacher Juliet. Nag-lunch ka na ba? Hindi pa. Ikaw? Hindi pa. Oh, inilibre mo ba ako? <laughs> ha? Hindi. Okay lang. Hindi. Okay lang. Ang ganda ka naman sa akin! Di ba? <laughs> Oy, huwag ka sa akin tumingin. Yung mga records dito. Ay. Paano naman kasi itong akala kong potential Romeo ko? Romeo din pala ang gusto. Sa totoo lang, hindi naman ako nagmamadali. Isa pa, nandyan naman sila.
Good day again, Kavibao, and welcome to our Speakers Demoreal webinar series. For the discussion today, the topic will be on gender sensitivity and equity in the early grades through literature. Again, for those who will be chosen and will join our speaker in the Zoom, the speaker will ask you to share your videos or your, your microphones and make sure that you turn them on for the recitation. Again, please turn your microphones on. The speaker ask you to answer or for recitation. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e certificate of participation. Visit certificate with the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnUs1PH as our official hashtag for Experience learning and now to proceed with our webinar this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the speaker today. He is a consultant and evaluator of Philippine Basic Education, the curriculum and academic consultant, Sisters of Good afternoon, teachers. So we're going to proceed with our demonstration this afternoon, demo reel, and uh, I'm tasked to talk about, um, not really talk about, it's how we can integrate other focus in our learning for our students, like gender sensitivity. And it is one thing that we uh, we are encouraged of by the United States, United Nations, the Department of Education, and all institutions of society to integrate, you know, uh, concepts that, you know, would help our students become, uh, civic-minded individuals who are, who are able to um, be open-minded with the differences uh, within the community. And when we talk about um, integrating some themes and focus on say grade one, grade two, grade three, it doesn't mean that we have to change altogether our lesson plans, the flow of it, the design of which, sorry, it's, it's 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 warm here in Kabiti right now. So anyway, so what you can do is integrate those concepts in the story by selecting the right story that is within the level of understanding of our students. I know that selecting a story for gender sensitivity and equity is quite difficult to to uh, to look for. I've been doing a lot of research in this past few days and past few weeks on researching on on literature or children's literature that specifically focuses on um, gender sensitivity and equity that are within the level of our students. Um, I've researched that a lot from Africa, the lab from Canada, New Zealand and United, United States, but most of the topic there would be very specific to their culture. So we need to, we need to have our own. So what I did is I, I composed my own and the kind of uh, the kind of story that I came up with for um, gender sensitivity and equi equity would be focusing more on gender equity and sensitivity within the family, all right? Like contextualized within the family because that's more comprehensive and relevant for our students. Before I proceed, I would like to share the PowerPoint presentation with you. And um, for those who are, my, who, will be my, who are my students today, you will also have a copy of, you will have access to the PowerPoint that I'm using right now and the lesson plan that I've created, all right? A moment, please. Good day to my students. All right. So it's about gender sensitivity and equity, and and we need to realize that you know helping our kids become more sensitive and 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 shun away first from, from stereotypes in our society, like stereotyping colors, stereotyping tests. I focus more on on the most prevalent kind of stereotypes in, in the Philippines, 
that will be based on the stereotypes of task at home, like this kind of task, like washing the dishes or, or making the bed or washing the clothes or cleaning the house, tending the garden, uh, watering the plants. These are simple activities, you know, kids are, you know, growing up with at home. So, and, and sometimes in the culture in the Philippines, uh, uh, we, we somehow, there are still some people who stereotype this type of task and household chores are specific to a particular uh, gender. Now, it's uh, this type of task is for boys and this particular task are for girls. And I focus more on that because that's uh, most relevant to the age of our citizens, age group that is between five years old to eight years old. So the, we're focusing on the early grades, but I focus more on grade one though. Okay, so the grade one level standards that we'll be focusing on for this afternoon's demo reel is on. Um, I transpose that to personal, personal statement. I will be able to listen with comprehension, speak clearly, and use appropriate expressions in talking about oneself, family, and other social situations. Now, for the learning competences today, um, I changed this statement to more personal. Okay, to be more personal. So today, this afternoon, we will be learning about the following statements, okay? Statement number one, I can take note of important details and stories listened to pertaining on the characters, setting, and the events. And then I can identify characters and events in the story that show gender sensitivity and equity, all right? That one is not part of the MELCs of the Department of Education. I added it. I added in as an additional element to having focus more on uh, gender sensitivity and equity. If you want to have questions on it or an activity on it or a focus on it in our lesson, we have to indicate the learning competency. And the third one is I can recognize sentences telling in and asking. Okay, good afternoon, children. So before we proceed to the story, I prepared a really, really good, interesting story for you, children, this afternoon. And before we proceed to our to our uh, story this afternoon, I let us first um, read the following words that we have learned last week. Remember that last week I introduced to you, introduced to you seven basic words that you need to memorize because these are very important words that you will encounter when you reach grade two. So as early as now, you need to memorize all of these words and I will guide you how you do it. So very carefully, listen to me as I pronounce each word. And then on the second time, uh, I will read each word and repeat after me, okay? Here are the words that we learned last week. Ah, and away. Big, blue, can, come. Now, please switch on your 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 microphones, and then I will re I will read each word and repeat after me. Okay, children. Yes, ah. 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 Very good. And. And. Very good. Away. Away. Very good. Big. Away. Big. Big. Good. Blue. 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 Can. 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 Um. 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 Very good. Um. These are the seven words that we learned last week, remember? So what I want you to do is, all together as a class, I would like you to read all these words on your own as I flash to you the, I flash to each word. Ready? Go. Ah. Uh. Uh. Very good. And. And. Away. 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 Very good. Pig. Pig. No. Good. Can. 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 And. Can. Very good, children. So by now, we we encountered all these words for five days. Week. Now we are going to learn. Sorry, seven words. So this week, we're going to learn seven more words, and in total, we'll have 17 words that we can recognize, okay? These are the seven words for this week. Now, same procedure. I will, I will read all the words and listen carefully as I'll pronounce each word. The second time, the second round, is that I will read each word, and then you repeat after me as the way I pronounce it, Okay. Down, find, 
four. Funny. <laughs> Go. Help. Here. Okay. Now I will read each word, uh, pronounce each word, and repeat after. Down. 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 Very good. Find. 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 Good. Four. 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 Good. Funny. 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 All right. Go. 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 Help. 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 Here. Here. Very good. Now I'll call someone from you and then you are going to read the word that I will flash for you. Okay, let's start with Joseph. Joseph, go. Down. Fine. Very good. Now, Jacob. Jacob. This is Jacob Donuts. Uh, let's go for Robbie. Robbie Lynn's Petito. Four. Funny. Very good. Now let's have Monica. Go. And? Help. And? Here. Here. Say it, Monica. Here. All right. Now we are going to put them together. Let's. We're going to put together the seven words that we learned last week and where we memorized last week and the seven words for this week. All right. So let's have Moana. Moana, let's read the first line. Go. A. Okay, you say ah. Ah. Good. Next. And. Good. And. Away. Very good. Let's now have Riza. Big. Good. Blue. Very good. Ten. Outstanding. Now let's have Alexandria. Alexandria, are you ready? I think Alexandra is not ready yet. Let's have uh, Reza. Reza, go. Come. Good. Down. Awesome. Next. Find. Way to go. Very good, Reza. Now let's have the next set. Let's have Bernadette. Bernadette, please. Are you ready? Yes. Here's your words. Here are your words. Four. Funny. Good. Go. This one. Go. All right. And then let's have, let's go back to Joseph. Let's go for these words. Help, help. Here. All right. All together, let us read all the fourteen words that we are learn. We have learned from last week and for this week. All right. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Ah. 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 Away. Away. Big. Big. Blue. Good. Blue. 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 Can. 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 Come. Come. Down. Down. Find. 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 Four. 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 Funny. 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 Go. 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 Help. Help. Oh. Here. Here. Very good. Now, what's good about this is that we can put these words together to form simple sentences and simple phrases. Let's find out. I prepared 10 phrases for you, simple sentences for you, using all of these type words. All right? 
I will again, same process. Um, listen to me as I read the words and then you repeat after me. Let's have sentence number one. Go down, repeat. Go down. So say it, go down, go. Go down. Go down. Very good. Go down. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Good. Very good. Come here. Come here. Come here. Good. Go find help. Go, go find help. help. Go find help. Very good. Come and help. Come, Come and, and help. help. Come and help. Very good. Come now, help. this time I'm going to call someone and you're going to read each simple sentence one by one. I'll call one student at a time, okay? Let's have say, say sentence number one. Let's have Bernadette. Bernadette? I think Bernadette is not ready yet. Let's go for Reza Castillo. Go down. Very good. Let's go for Moana. Moana, here's your, here, here's your sentence. Reza? Go away. Very good. Let's have Monica. Monica, it's your sentence. All right, Monica is not ready. Let's go for Joseph. Joseph? Come here, come here. Very, very good. Let's go for um, Robilene. Go find. Go find Go help. find help. All right, and last one, let's go for Jacob. Come and help. Very good. Now let's have another five sentences out of the sight words that we have memorized from last week and this week. All right, listen as I read this word together in a sentence. Big and blue can, go. Big and blue can. Very good. Come down and help. Come down and help. Good. Find a big blue cat. Go. Find, Find a big blue cat. Can. Good. Next, we have calm down and find help. Go. Calm down and, calm down and find help. Very good. And the last sentence is we have come help find a big blue cat. Go. Come help. Come help. Find a big blue cat. Come help. Find a big. Very good. <laughs> All right. Now I'll call again some students and then you're going to read the sentences. Let's begin with Joseph. Go. This is your sentence. Big and blue can. Very good. Rob Lee, this is your sentence. Go. Come down and help. Let's have Riza, Riza Soriano. Find a big blue can. Oh. Very good. Let's have Alexandria. This is her sentence. Calm down and find help. Very good. And finally, Mo Moana, here's your sentence. Moana, what are you with Ma Maui? <laughs> no, sir, no. As to what sentence, sir, I suddenly lost my signal. Okay, this one, the last sentence, this one. There you go. Okay, sir, thank you. Come help find a big blue can. Very good. Now, I hope you realize that the words that you memorize, that we memorize every week can help us easily read and make out make some sense as if we put them together, all right? And then when we put them together, 
they sound like we know the meaning and they have meaning, all right? We just keep on practicing until it makes sense to us. But more, most importantly is that we need to memorize all of these words because these are the words that we will encounter when we reach grade two. So the earlier that we memorize words, the better you get to become good readers. Very good children. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to flash you, flash to you a picture and then we're going to learn the word in Filipino, in your mother tongue, and in English. Now, in Filipino, we call this as daga. What's this again? Daga. Daga. Very good. In English, we call this as mouse. mouse. Again. Mouse. Yeah. Very good. Mouse. What's the Tagalog of this picture again? Daga. 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 What's the English of daga? Mouse. 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 All right. Mouse. Let's make a sentence. That's a mouse. Say mouse. 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 And we say a mouse. A mouse. A mouse. Very good. All right. Now let's have another picture. We have in Tagalog or Filipino, we call this as langdang, correct? Yes. Yes, langdang. In English, we call it as an. And 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 very good. All right, let's make some few statements out of this picture. We say and and good. We say an and an and okay, and we say a red and a red and what's the color of the red? What's the color of the ant? Red. red. Very good. What what insect has the color red in this picture? Ant. Ant. Very good. Ant. Let's have another picture. This is a picture of myself. Just kidding. All right. In Tagalog or Filipino, it's called orangutan. All right. Orangutan. 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 Yes. In English, it's the same word. Orangutan. 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 Yes. Uh, again, remember in Philippines, you say orangutan. In Tagal or in English, you also say orangutan, not orang orangutan. Same word. Orangutan. 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 Very good. Let's make some sentences out of this. We say orangutan. Orang orangutan. Orangutan. Good. And orangutan. And orangutan. orangutan. Good. A big orangutan. A big, a big orangutan. 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 A big orangutan. Good. Good. Now, here's in Tagalog or in Filipino, we say higaan. Higaan. Or, higaan. Uh, right. Say higaan. Higaan. Say kama. 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 All right. In English, we call this as bed. Bed. Say, bed. 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 Good. What's what's the English word of higaan again? Bed. 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 What's the Tagalog word of bed? Higaan. Very good. Kama or po. kama. Kama. Or kama. Very good. Let's make some simple sentences out of this picture. We say bed. 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 Good. We say a bed. A bed. bed. Good. We say a big bed. A big, a big, big bed. bed. Very good. Let's have another picture. This is a rock. Yeah, sorry, pala, Tagalog muna. The Tagalog word of this picture is called bato. Say it. Bato. 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 All right. Very good. Now, the English of the word bato is rock. Rock. Yes. Rock. rock. Right. What's the Tagalog word or Filipino word of rock? Bato. 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 Very good. Bato. All right. Let's make some simple sentences out of this picture. We say rock. 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 We say a rock. A rock. A rock. And we say a big rock. A, a big rock. Very good. Now, let's have a la the last picture. In Tagalog or Filipino, we call it tahana. Say it tahana. 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 Or we call it also as bahay. 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 All right. In English, we call this as home. 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 Good. Home. In or house. 
House. House. house. Very good. What is the Tagalog word for house again? Bahay or tahanan. Very good. What is the Tagalog word? Or tahanan. Let's make some simple sentences out of this picture. We say home. 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 A home. A home. 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 Very good. A big home. A big, big, big home. Very good. Now, I would like you to look at these pictures. These pictures that we, we learn, it's Filipino or Tagalog word and it's are exactly the pictures or the, the animals that we will learn and hear from the story this afternoon. All right, I want you to look at them. So we have a mouse. We have an orangutan. We have an ant. And we have things like the bed or a bed, a rock, and a house. These are some concepts that we are going to encounter in our story this afternoon. But remember, I would like us to be reminded of our, um, of our guidelines for listening to the story. So when teacher Ricky is telling a story, you need to sit properly, keep your mouth closed, pay attention to me. You are not to talk with your seatmates or whoever sitting beside you in your respective homes. And you will have to listen carefully to the story because I will be asking some few interesting questions every after some pictures that I will show you. All right? Now, the title of our story this afternoon is Matty the Mouse and Anna the Ant Learn a Good Lesson. The writer of this story is Brother Roderick Motil Aguirre. It was Saturday night. The mouse family was having dinner. Papa Mouse was there. Mama Mouse was there. Ati Molly was there. And myself, Matty, was there. Mama, Papa, may I be excused? Matty said after he was done with his dinner. Why are you in a hurry, Matty? His papa asked. My favorite anime is about to begin in a few minutes. I will do the dishes after, promise. He begged. All right then, since you promised, his papa said. Promise, papa, promise. Matty said as he stood up and left for his bedroom. Matty didn't realize that 30 minutes had passed. He didn't even notice his Ati Molly enter their bedroom and ask him some questions. <coughs> Matty, Molly clears her throat to get her brother's attention. Oh, Ate Molly, you're there. I didn't notice you, you came in. Matty answered. Um, well, you were so busy watching your favorite anime. I am going to bed now. Remember, tomorrow is Sunday and it's our worship and family day. Molly kindly said. Aha, uh -huh. I know, Ate. I will go to bed when I'm done here. I will lower down the volume so you could go to sleep, Matty added. Thank you, Matty. Remember, you promised to wash the dishes before you go to sleep. Molly reminded her little brother. Yes, Ate, don't worry. I got it. I will wash dishes right after I'm done watching my favorite anime, Matty said confidently. Now, before we proceed, let's recall some few information we had just listened to. So, Joseph, who were having dinner? Again, who were having dinner? The mouse, the rat. <laughs> yes, the mouse, the rat. Was Mama, Mama Mouse there? 
Yes. The family mouse. The family, the family mouse. Very good. Was a mouse there? Yes. Very good, Joseph. What's the name of the Ati Mouse? Ati Molly. Ati Molly. Ati Molly. Very good. What's the name of the little boy mouse? Matty. Matty. Very good. Why did Matty excuse himself from supper? Why yes. did he excuse himself from supper? Let's have Reza. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's okay, Joseph. It's okay, Joseph. Reza. Why did Matt excuse himself from supper? Because he wanted to watch his favorite anime. Very good. Is it good or bad? Bad. Oh, it's okay. For as long as you, you excuse yourself and you ask permission. It's not bad to watch anime, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Very good. All right. For as long as you ask permission from your parents, it's not bad. But we'll find out what Matty did something wrong in the story. Thank you very much, Reza. Let's go for Moana, who's with Maui right now. <laughs> Moana, what did Matty promise to his papa and mama? Again, what did Matty promise to his papa and mama? So from what I have um, heard from your story, sir, I heard that Matty promised to his father and mother that he will wash the dishes after he watched the, his favorite anime. Very good. He promised, Matty promised his dad that if, because he was allowed to watch his favorite anime, he needed to, to wash the dishes after he watched his favorite anime. Very good. Maui, Maui, Moana. <laughs> Sorry. All right, next question. Is washing the dishes a task only for parents? Again, is washing the dishes a task only for parents? Robelina Estadito. No, sir. No. Could it be a responsibility for any member of the family? Yes, as part of the task. As At a home. Tutor. Yes. Right. Very good. Now, let's have... Um, let's have... Monica, Monica, is washing the dishes a task only for boys? Is washing the dishes a task only for boys? Oh, Joseph, you may answer that, Joseph. Uh, number five, sir. Yes, number five. It's washing the dishes. That's only for boys? No. Right. Is washing the dishes a task only for girls? Again, is washing the dishes a task only for girls? No. Could boys and girls have the same task of, of washing the dishes? Yes. Right. Now, do you think Matty kept his promise? Do you think Matty kept his promise? We'll find out. All right, keep your, your thoughts on that. His parents and Atimali slept as early as they can because the next day was Sunday and it was their church day and their family day. When Matty was done watching, he curled up to his bed and he went fast to sleep. He even forgot to switch off the television. Maddie, wake up! His sister woke him up. Get up and make up your bed. You need to hurry or we will be late for church. She added. I'm up, Ate. Matty yawned and stretched. Oh, oh I'll, I'll, I'll be just for a minute, Ate. I'll just go to the bathroom and I'll be as quick as I can. I'll change my clothes and then I'll be ready for church. Maddie sleepily her ate. When he got down, sorry, I'm supposed to move. When he got down to the live to the di dining room, everyone was already there. He noticed his father's frown and his mother's disappointed look. 
Mama, Papa, what happened? Why do you look so disappointed? Mati asked his parents, worried that something really happened. You broke your promise last night, Mati. I told them calmly. You didn't even turn off the television last night, nor make up your bed this morning. His mother added, Oh, about the dishes. Matty suddenly remembered the promise he made to his mama and papa. I promise to do that after we get back from church and after we had fun, we have fun in the park. Besides, it's not even a task for boys like me. It should be Ati Molly should be washing the dishes. She's the girl in the family. She's supposed to be washing the dishes, not I. Am I right? Matty said casually. His parents and Ati Molly was even more disappointed by Matty's answer. Matty, when you promise something, you have to honor that or else nobody will believe you. It is not a matter of being a boy or a girl. It is all about promises and responsibilities. His mama consolingly answered the little boy. Washing the dishes is not a task only for girls. Boys and girls can do the same tasks. Making a promise is not about being a boy or being a girl, but being able to fulfill what you promised. That shows that you are a respectful, honest, disciplined, and dependable member of this family. Papa added with a little bit of understanding. This is just one time. It's like all against what I have done, as if I have done really something really, really bad. Matthew cried, and then he ran as fast as he can outside their house and into the forest. I said I will do it later. It's not like I'm not gonna do it. As soon as he said that, he kept on running and running while his family were calling towards him to stop and calm down. Now let's have this question. Why were Matty's parents disappointed with him? Again, why were Matty's parents disappointed with him, Joseph? Because Ma, uh, because Ma, had to wash the dishes. Was that again, Joseph? Because Ma, he didn't wash the dishes. Right, because he promised, yet he did not. He did not fulfill his promise. Yes. Right. Next, let's have Robeline. Robeline. What did Matt say about who should be doing the dishes? Is he right when he said that washing the dishes are only washing the dishes is only for girls? Excuse me, sir, again, because something did, noisy here. It's okay. Why did Matt say about who should be doing the dishes? Is he right when he said that washing the dishes is only for girls? No, Matt said that her uh, uh, his auntie should be uh, should be doing the dishes is that washing right dishes. no because doing uh, washing dishes not only for a girl very good probably okay, let's have another question let's go for moana moana was matthew right in defending himself was he right in defending himself moana Ano, kinuha na si Moana ni Maui. Joseph na lang po. Joseph, was Matthew right in defending himself? What's Matthew right in defending himself? Yes. Is it right to defend himself that, oh. um, that he did not fulfill his promise and tell his parents that it should be oh. no, 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 to do no, washes? No. No, 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 no. No, all right. So what should what should he have done instead? 
Should he apologize? Should he say sorry for what he did? Say sorry. All right. But let's find out if really Matty will learn to say sorry. All right. Let's proceed with the story. Matty sat on a rock and wiped his tears away when he heard a grumbling sound. It was Anna, the ant, walking so fast and mumbling to herself. Hey, Anna, Matty called her. Where are you going? You look upset, he noticed. My mother and I had an argument. She got upset with me because I didn't make up my bed. She just wants me to do that because I'm a girl. But my brothers, she wouldn't ask my brothers to, to make up their beds. This is really unfair, he said. My parents too, Matty said, sniffling. The two started sharing their stories about how their parents were being unfair, about them being children and them being a girl and a boy. They didn't notice that Uncle Oscar, the orangutan, was climbing down from the trees and sat down on a big rock. What's the matter, children? Why are you both upset? Uncle Oscar asked the children. The two children took turns in telling their stories. They did not understand why there had to be too many rules at home, why they had to do some tasks for boys, tasks for girls, tasks for big boys, tasks for little boys. They just don't understand why do they why they have to do all of these tasks and follow their parents. Mm, so that's your problem. Uncle Oscar smiled. Let me ask you this. Who takes care of your food every day? Oscar looked at Anna, the aunt, and Matty, the mouse. My mother and father, answered Anna, the aunt, confidently. My mama and papa too, answered Matty. Very good. Who buys your or prepares your clothes every day and your daily Needs. Oscar asked again the children. My mother and father still, Anna answered confidently. My mama and papa, answered Matty smiling. Who cares for you when you are sick? Who stays late at night just to make sure you take your medicine on time? Oscar asked the children again. My, my mother and my father. Anna answered, not feeling too confident this time. My mama and papa answered Matty. Wait, are our parents supposed to do that? What are you trying to tell us, Uncle Oscar? Matty asked the wise around with him. Oscar saw the children were already starting to think that they wanted to realize their mistakes. Then he asked, now, who prepares food for your parents? Again, who prepares food for your parents? My mother and father take turns in preparing our food, including theirs answered Anna, now getting confused. My papa and mama does that too. Matt agreed with Anna, also getting more confused. That's right, children. Again, who takes care of your parents' daily needs? Oscar asked even further, patiently looking at one child to the other. My papa and mama, they care for each other while I play. 
Matty said, a little confused and feeling a little bit sorry. My mother and father do the same thing. Anna agreed, really feeling sorry this time. Your parents, they don't think if they are boys or girls. They do not think if they are women or a man. They only help each other so that they can accomplish things for your family and for you, children. They do not identify tasks and responsibilities as mothers or fathers, right? They do all of this because it is the right thing to do. How do you think they grew up to be respectful, responsible, and disciplined parents? Oscar patiently asked last time, for the last time, the two children. Um, because they followed their parents' rules when they were children too? Asked Anna, really feeling sorry this time. Um, um, I guess because they loved and respected their parents and followed what, what they told them to do and did not complain whether the task given to them is for boys or for girls, Matty answered, realizing his mistakes. That's right, children. Your parents gave you all these rules and responsibilities because they wanted to grow up to become respectful, responsible, and disciplined and a mouse, Oscar explained. It is really not about who the man is or who the woman is. We work together to accomplish things. They tell you what to do because they know what's good for you. No parent in this whole world will put their children in harm's way. And always remember that they will always love you no matter what and no matter who you are, he added. Oh, oh, I think I hurt my mother and father's feelings. I talked back at them this morning, Anna said, feeling ashamed of herself. Me too. I think I hurt my parents and my ate when I walked out on them this morning and did not listen to what they were they have to say. Matty said, also feeling ashamed of what he did. What should we do, Uncle Oscar? Both of the, the both of them asked the orangutan. Well, that's simple. You just go back home. Tell your parents that you are sorry for doing what you did this morning. Tell them you love them and promise them that you will obey them from now on and do the test you promised to do. Thank you, Uncle Oscar. The two children hugged the orangutan for making them realize their mistakes. Then they waved goodbye and went their own separate ways. When Anna got home, her mother and father was waiting for her. She ran to them and hugged them. And she told them, Mama, Papa, I really am sorry. I now realize that this tax that you this tax that you give to me are for my own good, not because I'm a girl or because my brothers are boys. It's because that's something that I have to do and that's the right thing to do. I'm sorry. And I, I promise to obey you this time around. Matty's parents and Ati Molly were by the door waiting for him. He also ran to his family's embrace and told them he was sorry about what he did and for breaking his promises and for saying that washing the dishes are only for girls and that's for Ati Molly's responsibility. Atibali smiled at Matty and then forgave him. Matty promised them that from now on, he will be a good boy and I will no longer talk back or even disobey his parents. Now, here are some questions I would like to ask you again. Joseph, how did Uncle Oscar change the minds of Anna and Matty? 
again, how did Uncle Oscar change the minds of Anna and Matthew? Uh, my answer is Uncle Oscar, Uncle Oscar tell Anna and Matty to, to say so, to say sorry to their parents and 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 for what they did and and disobey them uh, to uh to, to to tell them uh, to tell so, sorry to them. All right, and promise to obey them. Right, very good, Joseph. Now, for the next question, did Anna and Matty learn their lesson? Probably. Did Anna and Matty learn their lesson? Yes. How? They realize what they make and, and, they, and how they um, disobey their parents and breaking their promises. Very good. That's right. Should tasks and responsibilities at home be assigned specifically for boys and girls? Let's have um, Moana. Moana, should tasks and responsibilities at home be assigned specifically for boys and girls? Why or why not? Personally, sir, no, sir, because any job, task, or any activities, anyone can do that regardless of their gender, and sex because anyone has the, the capability and responsibility to do anything. Very good. Is making bed a responsibility for all children regardless of being boys or girls? Sorry, sir. Can you please repeat the question? Is making the bed a responsibility for all children regardless of even if they're boys or girls? Yes, sir. Yes. Is washing the dishes and cleaning the house, watering the plants, a responsibility for all members of the family, regardless of if you are a boy or girl? Yes, sir, because it involves the necessities and cleanliness of the house. Very good. And everyone benefits from it, right? Yes, sir. Very good. Last question, though. Could boys and girls do the same task? Again, same tasks and responsibilities at home. Could boys and girls do the same tasks and responsibilities at home? Bernadette. Wala pala si Bernadette. Robili. Yes, they can do as the same tasks and responsibilities at home. Because Very. that task is... Not only for boys or not only for girls, but also it's helping each other to accomplish each task. At very time. good. Very. That's why children, when you are given a task, do not even think that it's for boys or for girls. Think that you are supposed to do the task because you can do it and it's for everyone. Okay, so let us not think that this task are specifically boy for boys or for girls. We can do all of these things, regardless if we are a boy or a girl. Now, let's have a 10 activity, though, okay? What I want you to do is that I'm going to show you a picture. You are going to tell me what animal is that and what's the name of the animal in the story. Again, I'll show you a picture of the animal, and then you're going to tell me what animal is that, and then what's the name of that animal in the story, all right? All right. So let's begin with this little brown animal. What is this animal? Joseph. Uh, what's the, the name? What's the animal? What's the name of the animal? Uh, Mat Matty or Molly. <laughs> mouse, right? Mouse. Mouse, right. If it's a boy, what's the name of the boy mouse, little boy in the story? Matty. Matty, very good. Rod, Robeline, what animal is this with color red? An the, ant. It's an oh. ant. What's the name of the ant animal in the story? Anna. Very good. It's Anna. Now let's have Moana. Moana, what's this huge animal? What's the name of this huge animal? It's an orangutan. It's an orangutan. Very good. What's the name of the orangutan animal in the story? 
Uncle Oscar. Sorry, na wala po ko. Okay, it's Uncle Oscar. So these are the three major characters in the story. We have Matty the Mouse, and at the end, Uncle Oscar, the orangutan. Now, I'll show you some pictures, and you tell me what happened in the story. This is a game called Picture, Show, and Tell. All right, I'll call. I'll show you a picture, and I call anyone from you to tell me what happened in that picture based on the story that we have heard or listened to. Here's the first picture. Here's the first picture. You tell me what happened in this picture. Let's begin with Jillian. Ay, di pala kasama si Jillian, sorry. Let's go for Moana. Sorry, tatulong kayo tatawagin kasi tatulong pula kayo nandito. So, Ate Mole reminded um, Matty the Mouse that the next day they're going to ha- to go to the church. Very good. Very good. That was the night before Sunday. So, it was Saturday night. Very good, Moana. What about this picture? Let's go for Robeline. It's Molly. Uh, no. Yeah, it's Molly. Matty, it's Matty. Matty. It's Matty when he ran out of his home because he is upset. Very good. Out from his family, out of the house. And where did he go? To the forest. To the forest. Very good. Into the forest. Into the forest. Do you put it into the woods? Just kidding. Into the <laughs> forest. Very good. Now, Joseph, tell me what, what happened in this picture. Okay. Uh, Mati crying uh, uh, in, the, in the picture. Uncle Oscar came down from the tree and 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 talking to Mati and, and Anna what, uh, uh, to comfort them for what they did to their parents about that. Very good. What about this picture? Sorry, I got no one. All right. What about this picture? Let's go for Moana again. So the two children, Matty and Anna the aunt, discuss their heartaches and problems at home when they are treated, when they feel that they are not treated nicely at home. Very good. Now, how about this picture? Uh, Joseph, what happened in this picture? Anna went by, uh, Anna returned to, the, to her to her parents to to say sorry what they what he did and and feel happy again. Okay, she felt happy and she said sorry to the to her parents for you know for, for shouting back and talking back to their parents. Very good, Joseph. Now, what about in this picture, Robolin? What happened here? Matty come back to his parents and embrace them. Then he felt sorry for what he did that morning for breaking Fair. his promise and take and make his uh, make he promise to his parents that he will obey and never break his promise. Promise, very good. Now, definitely you remember the events in the story. So this time, what I want you to do is that I would like you to sequence the following picture frames according to the order of what happened in the story. Okay, so these are the pictures. We have A, B, C, and D. What I want you to do is on your paper or in our chat box, I would like you to, to, to in your chat, in our chat box, key in your answer as to the order of the events. It could be A, B, C, D. It could be A, C, B, D, or A, D, B, D, or B, A, D. I'll give you 30 minutes to analyze this picture and then key in your answer in our chat box as to the order of events based on this picture. All you have to do is write the sequence of the letters based on the order of events in the story. All right. So done. done. Let's find out if your answers are correct. The order is A, C, D, 
and B, very good children. Let's give yourself, let's give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, before we end our session for this morning, let's practice the words that we have learned today. All right. Now, this time, just you guys, I'll show you the picture and then pronounce the words by yourselves. Are you ready? And go. Oh, oh that's a baby. Me, baby. It's, it's very fuzzy. What did you go? Go down. Very good. Go away. Go away. Very good. good. Come here. Come here. Very, very good. Go find help. Go very find good. Help. Come and help. Come and help. Come and help. Very good. Big and blue can. Big and blue can. Very good. Come down and help. help. Very good. Find a find big blue, blue, find blue. A big blue can. Very good. Come down and find help. Come down and find help. Very good. And finally, come, come help find a big blue, blue can. can. Very come good. Help now, find a big blue can. Very good. And we also have sentences based on the pictures. Let's read them. We say, sorry. Mouse. 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 Very good. Mouse. This one. Very good. What about the picture? Orangutan. 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 Very good. Orangutan. Orangutan. Big orangutan. Big orangutan. Very good. What about this? Bed. Bed. Good. A big bed. A bed. A big bed. A big bed. A big bed. All right. A big bed. Rock. Okay. This one. Rock. Rock. A rock. A rock. A rock. A rock. A big rock. Very good. Next. Home. 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 A home. A home. And. A big a big home. A big home. Very good. There you go. So that's the end of our lesson today. And what I want you to do is again, based on you having your modules, the words and the pictures and the, of the story. Okay. What I want you to do is to go to go over that over that because tomorrow we're going to do a retelling activity of the story that we have heard today. And of course, we're going to make some sentences out of the words. The, the seven words last week and the seven words for this week, and we have a total of 14 words. So please practice them, keep on pronouncing them and reading them on your own tonight. All right. Thank you very much, Julian. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time at the same platform. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. sir. Okay, Thank you, open. Sir. Jillian, Thank open you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much, teachers. Now we will proceed to the question and answer portion. If our teachers in our Zoom call have questions for brother Roderick, you may ask them for now. You can chat in our comment section uh, in our chat box, or if our viewers on YouTube have questions for brother, you may chat po in our comment section. Sige po, I'll give you a few minutes, and the teachers here po can also unmute their microphones. Pwede yung sa mic na lang question. Apo, apo. Kasi pag ito tayo pahaba. <laughs> uh, Dokri, uh, Brother Ricky, this is my question for you. Yes, please. We know, we know gender sensitivity in early grades. Uh, ve uh, we know gen gender sensitivity in early grades are very carefully carefully mandatory by DepEd because we right. know because we know that uh, 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 nursery up to grade three is very sensitive due to emotions and and uh, uh, emotion and discrimination of each child. Then we know naman each child that have they uh, uh they, they 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 did not know what they doing because you know children. Yes, there are still children. Yes. Uh, 
what uh as teacher if you if you if you if you, if you, dis if you discipline them they will tell to, they will tell their parents the teacher teacher follow me teacher teacher oh. <laughs> teacher teachers called me so, right. of course uh parents issue you know uh, <laughs> you apply chat, chat, uh, chat protection policy <laughs> okay. yes i i understand but that's uh, why that's what we do if it's mandatory that we integrate yeah uh, we know that one if it, uh, even sex education right yes uh, that's why what we did, what I've shown your model to you, is that it's still embedded in our lessons. If you observe, we have the same objectives as the regular objective. What we just added is to identify some of the parts of the story about gender sensitivity. Now, what we do here is that you don't didactically provide, didactically introduce that to the students. You make students uh, be exposed to gender sensitivity via stories. That's why it's called through literature. Huwag po kayo magsasabi sa mga bata na, kayo ha, mga bata kayo, you call that as didactic approach. Nangangaral. Didactic means nangangaral. Definitely po talaga magkikwento mga bata. Pero kung umuwi mga bata, alam mo po, mama, nagmay kwento po kami sa, sa school tungkol po yun sa isang mouse. If they tell story, if they tell about uh, gender sensitivity, what they learn about gender sensitivity and equity uh, based on taking responsibilities at home from stories, then that's something that it will stay with them and not, you know, because we told them that's that's so. So safe po tayo pag sa, sa literature. Only again, one of the many problems with uh, integrating gender sensitivity, uh, sex education, uh, what else? Uh, multiculturalism. The problem is that we have few stories for those. I, I go personally, I've been... And this past few weeks and past few days have been search, researching and searching for appropriate stories, children's stories for integrating gender sensitivity. Alas, magkakaiba kasi ang kultura ng ibang bansa. So the way we treat gender sensitivity uh, in the home is quite different. So iba rin mga pangalan and so on and so forth. So what I did instead is to, uh, to create my own story. And uh, it's easier for students to relate to the story if it's more of animals in the form of uh, fable, ganun po siya. It's easier for students to understand that. That's why it's called children's literature. Kaya lang po, sir, kailangan matuto po ang ating mga teachers mag-compose ng stories kasi may, if there is a dearth or lack of, the, of literature available out there for us to integrate all of these concepts that, you know, DEPED is mandating us to integrate in our lessons on top of teaching them how to read how to write, how to listen, to comprehend, listen, then we are at a loss how to do that. Now, uh, there's a way of doing that too. What you can do is you can uh, sanitize or decontextualize some stories out there. Yung mga lessons, yung mga stories po na fables, kagaya ng Aesop's Fables, Hand Christians Anderson. Pwede nyo po yun i-recontextualize para maging, um, how do you call this, um, gender sensitive po. Saka Philippine culture po. It can be done, but that should be a session that, you know, should be provided for you kung paano ginaw. Kasi there are certain principles uh, that you need to follow how to contextualize and how to adopt uh, stories out of this you know, original children's literature. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome Joseph. Thank Para, you very much. Joseph, you last year, oh, last year, last week, last time? Ako po ulit. Oh, yan. yan. Si Joseph palagi yan nandito eh. Sige po. Thank you very much, brother. Our next question is from Frankie. Is it okay po to use gender, gender neutral language when appropriate kapag nagkakwento uh, po tayo sa students? Gender gender neutral words like uh, fisher, fisher folks. And so on and so forth. Yung mga words naman natin na ginagamit pa natin na gender sensitive for the kids are wala pa naman masyadong gender like for animals. Nagkakaroon na po tayo ng gender sensitivity pagdating po na ng higher form kasi ang gender sensitive, gender sensitive terms and vocabulary ay medyo mataas at hindi pa appropriate for early grades. We are using basic words that have denotation and connotation at wala pang masyadong gender and uh, uh, connotation or stereotypes. Halimbawa po, Fishermen, ang gamit po, ang dapat ang gender sensitivity po natin sa doon ay fisher folks. Alright? The problem with, say, 
if we say fisher folks, uh, some of the words like fishermen are still being used in literature. If we change that automatically at a very young age where students are still learning, we call it denotative words, um, baka mangyari po ay hindi nila ma-recognize ang difference ng fisher folks from fishermen. So gamitin po muna natin ang sinasabi natin na core vocabulary. And then uh, sa age naman po yan, sir, wala pa naman po alam ang bata kung anong mga words na may mga meaning na pang babae, na pang lalaki, na kasira. Ang gagawin na po natin is avoid those words that are stereotyping women and stereotyping boys. So if you find some words that are a high quality in your core vocabulary, kasi yung sinasabi ko po dati pa ng training is that you must have a core vocabulary list for kinder grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 on top of the basic the basic site words, be it price words or dot glitch, dot list. These core words are the words that are commonly used in ordinary conversation at their age level. There are some words like policemen, tas ginawa po natin gender sensitive at tawag po natin din po ay uh, police officer baka mahi, may iba po. So pwede po natin munang ituro ang policeman and then later on, pwede po natin sabihin na the counterpart for that is policewoman. But in general, we call them as police officer. Kailan baka maguluhan ng bata? Sa age na yan po, as much possible, let us try to uh, not use words that you know, would pertain to stereotyping. If that's not part of the core vocabulary that we need to teach our students. Papasok na po yan pagdating na ng ating higher forms kung tuturo na natin higher forms of vocabulary. Thank you. Remember again, yung pagturo po natin ng gender sensitivity should not be focused on gender sensitivity because the focus of early, of early grades po is towards literacy. Baka naman nag-integrate po tayo ng, nag-integrate tayo ng, uh, what do you call this, ng, ng gender sensitivity, sex education to the point na nawala ng focus natin sa literacy. Observe what I did. Nakafocus pa rin po ako sa literacy. Nakafocus pa rin ako sa comprehension. Nag-integrate po ako ng gender sensitivity. It should not be the core of our lesson. Kaya tinawag po natin integrate. Hindi, teachers out there in the early grades should not be distracted na Department of Education is requiring us to integrate. It doesn't mean that you are going to devote one particular lesson all about that. I sh uh, what I modeled to you is that you can integrate all of these concepts being required of us by Department of Education, but still maintaining that our focus, our primary focus is for our students to learn the words, the basic sight words, learn to listen, to comprehend in listening text, and to, to transition listening comprehension to reading. So yun pa rin ang focus po natin. Yun po dapat ang focus natin. All others are integrated lang. Thank you very much, brother. That's all the questions we have for now. Any last reminders to our viewers for today? Of course, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, I would just like us to be reminded why uh, Department actually it's not just Department of Education, but the whole world is you know really requesting all teachers, especially in the early grades, to integrate gender sensitivity, equity, and equality because it's not just it's not just emotion. It's not just uh, intelligence that contribute to the learnings of our students, but all of these things that we integrate also contribute to the totality of the development of every individual. All right, so by integrating, by integrating gender sensitivity and equity among our students through literature, again, through literature, it should not be outside literature. Otherwise, pag outside literature, po, ang tawag po natin doon, nangangaral ka na. Hindi pag uwi ng bata, talaga sabi, pinangaralan po kami sa, sa bahay. So it's, it's safer to, it's not really safer, it's, it's more context, contextualized if we integrate all of this through children's literature. So gender stereotyping can also limit the development of talents and abilities of girls and boys, women and men, as well as their educational experiences and life opportunities. That's why as a very young age, when, when the early, in the early grade school, that's where our students are learning to who become who they are. They are you know, going out of themselves, learn to, to find certain identity of themselves. That's where we integrate all of this. Their minds are still innocent and they are still open to other possibilities and other concepts. And that's why via literature, via, via the stories, we open their mind to other possibilities and acceptable concepts about how to treat others. It's not just about just 
you know, being treating women as women, treating men as men, or equally, and so on and so forth. It's just teaching our students in general respect other people and respect differences. To me, when I when I taught in the early grades, my focus is not necessarily on gender sensitivity. My focus is to teach I my students to teach my students in general to respect themselves, respect others, and respect differences. Because in the real world, there's always, always differences. And by teaching at the early grades, in the young minds of our students, that there is always, there will always be differences out there. And then what we can do is understand because it's a matter of being open to all of these possibilities. And finally, finally, teachers and parents and community members, both men and women must work together with children and young adults to break down the persistent gender stereotypes. Um, a problem po ng mga teachers, hindi naman po masyado, uh, uh, dati pamilya po, ang pinakamalaki po ng mga stereotypes na nakukunan natin yun ay media, especially mga telenovela na yan. So as much as possible, we would like to limit also, help our parents control what our children watch at home so that those type of stereotypes are not um, um, symbolically uh, learned by our students or subliminally learned by our students through television or media. With that, Thank you very much. I really love doing demo reel because there are some nuances of how we integrate lessons in the early grades that, you know, sometimes uh, it eludes us to understand that I wait. Dapat may focus pa rin ako. Ang focus ng curriculum ko ay ito. So when I integrate, siya po ay conform to what I'm supposed to teach. With that, thank you very much. Good afternoon. And for my regular online students because of that you will have a copy of my powerful presentation and the lesson plan that i have prepared for you so with that i give you permission to use the story that i have composed for this afternoon thank you very much Barada. welcome there we have it in behalf of the ball group incorporated i would like to thank our speaker very interactive and insightful and to all the viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning center. That acted as our students today, Ma'am Bernadette M. Arizala, Mr. Joseph Odelon Hermitai, one that you will be able to get a copy of Brother Ricky's presentation here in the lesson plan of Brother Ricky. Don't forget to register to get your e certificate of participation. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa 